Till now we have studied about the shear force and bending moment diagrams for simply supported beams and cantilever beams. So now overhang beams are those beams which have an overhang on one side or on both side. In case of overhanging beams, the bending moment changes its sign, but that again depends upon the type of loading or place of loading. So different loading condition will have different type of bending moment diagram, but there are chances that the bending moment changes its sign along the span. Method of finding out shear force and bending moment for these types of beam is same as we have studied for the previous cases. So let's start with an example of an overhang beam and it is the example of mixed loading that is in which we have point loads as well as uniformly distributed load. Consider a beam C A B D. So it's an overhanging beam. So you can see that the point load is acting at the point C and D. The beam is ported at point A and B. So it is having reactions RA and RB at point A and B. So first step is to calculate RA and RB. So we have the equation RA plus RB is equal to the total force that is 30 plus 20 both point load plus uniformly distributed load that is 25 kilonewton per meter so total load is 25 into 4 and this is total in kilonewtons so another equation is if i take the moment about point a 20 into distance is 4 plus 1 that is 5 meters so that is the moment for force 20 kilonewton minus r b into distance is 4 meters then we have the load that is uniformly distributed load the moment of that will be 25 into 4 so that is the load distance is you can say the line of action of this load will be at the center of this span that is at the distance 2 meters from point A so that will be the distance is 2 minus so moment due to 30 kN is 30 into 2 so that should be 0 so from these two equations, I will get Ra is equal to 90 kilonewtons and Rb is equal to 60 kilonewtons. So once the reactions are calculated, so next step is to find out the shear forces in various segments. So I will start from the left side that is from the point C. So let's first consider a segment CA. So I consider any section between C and A that is X at distance X from the point C. So as you can see the load of 30 kN is acting on the point C. So the magnitude of shear force will remain constant on this section CA. So now on the portion AB. I consider the axis xx between A and B. So this is at distance x from the point C. So now as per the definition of shear force, it is algebraic sum of all the forces on one side. So in this, I am considering left side. So algebraic sum of all the forces on the left side is, so now 30 and it is in the direction anti-clockwise on the left side. So it is negative. So also on the CA it, it should be negative. So it is minus 30 then plus that is 90 kilonewtons. And then I have to consider the load due to this portion. That is minus 25 into the length of the segment that is x minus 2. So this comes out to be 60 minus 25 x minus 2. So from here I can write that shear force at point A where the value of x is equal to 2 is 60 kilonewtons and shear force at point B where the value of x is equal to 6 is equal to 6 minus 2 is 4 so it comes out to be minus 40. 
So next is if I consider the section XX in the segment BD at the distance X from the point C then the shear force in the segment BD will be given by so downward force is negative minus 30 upward force is positive plus 90 then minus 25 into 4 and the upward force due to the direction is plus 60 this comes out to be 20 kN so to plot the shear force diagram we must have the values of shear force on the all points like C, A, B and D and we should also know about the trend of the variation so here you can see that in the portion C A it is constant in the portion A B it is varying linear with X the shear force is function of X and in the portion B D it is again constant so to draw the shear force diagram let's consider a line that represents the zero value of shear force and its length is equal to the span of the beam so I just mark the points C then A B and D so now I just plot the values from these calculations in the segment C A it remains constant and its magnitude is minus 30 so in the segment A B so when I see that at point A its value changes to 60 kilonewtons that means there is a step increase to 60 kilonewtons and then at point B it is its value is minus 40 it is somewhere here the line joining the magnitude of 60 kilonewton to the magnitude of minus 40 kilonewton it is varying linearly with x so I will draw a linear line so now for the segment BD it remains constant and there is a step change here to the positive 20 so now you can see that the shear force is changing its sign and its value is 0 at point O the location of point O is important we will see that bending moment will gain the maximum value at the point where shear force changes its sign and its value at that point is 0 so in this figure we have a point O where the shear force is 0 and it is changing its sign so to find its location I consider the relation this one and equate it to 0 so if I equate 60 minus 25 x minus 2 to 0 so I will get x is equal to 4.4 meters so now this 4.4 meters is the dimension from the point C so next let's talk about the bending moment for this case so now for bending moment analysis again consider the segment CA let's consider any XX section on the left side of XX section the moment is anti-clockwise so that's why it will be considered negative so it is equal to 30 into distance is X so it represents a linear variation so in section a b if I consider at any point inside b, a and b a section x x and again it is at the distance x from the point c the equation for moment will be minus 30 into x that is force into distance then plus R A into distance R A is 90 and the distance of R A is this much that is X minus 2 and then the moment due to the load that is uniformly distributed on the span on the left side of X X and that will be minus 25 into x minus 2 so that is the load and distance of its action is x minus 2 by 2 so I can write x minus 2 square by 2 so this expression is an parabolic expression so if I want to find out the values of moment at point A I just put the value of x is equal to 
2 so when I put x is equal to 2 it comes out to be minus 60 kilonewton meter and if I want to find out its value at point B so I put the value of x is equal to 6 so I will get minus 20 kilonewton meter so now also the point O that is lying inside the segment AB we have to find the value of movement at this point also so for that I will put x is equal to 4.4 movement at O is equal to when I put x is equal to 4.4 and by calculating it its value comes out to be 5.5 kilonewton meter so here you can see that on at point A the value is negative at point B the movement is negative but at point O it is positive that means somewhere in this segment the bending movement is also changing the signs so there will be two points so to find out that where it is changing the sign so we equate the equation for this portion portion to 0 so that means minus 30 x plus 90 x minus 2 minus 25 x minus 2 whole square by 2 is equal to 0 so from here I will get two values of x when I solve this equation I will get two values of x one is 5.38 meters and another is 3.42 meters so that means at x is equal to 5.38 meters from point C and at point 3.42 meters from C we have these two points where the bending moment will be zero and it will change the signs so this we will see when we draw the bending moment diagram so now for the further segment that is for the segment BD I will consider the section XX in this span again its distance is X from point C so the moment about this axis will be minus 30 times x plus 90 that is direction into distance is x minus 2 and the upward reaction rb also 60 x minus 6 and then we have a downward movement due to this wearing load between a b so for that the load value of load is 25 into 4 but when we calculate the movement i will consider its line of action as a center of this load so distance between this section xx and the line of action will be x minus 4 4 is that is this 2 plus this 2 so this is x so this distance will be given by x minus 4 so if I want to calculate the movement at point B I have to put the value of x is equal to 6 so when I put x is equal to 6 in this equation I will get it as minus 20 kilonewton meter and at point D where x is equal to 7 the movement is 0 so if I plot the bending movement diagram again I have to take an axis that represents 0 level of bending movement I mark the points A so starting from this point C we have 
at point C we have when x is 0 and c is 0. At point A when x is equal to 2, m a is equal to minus 60 kilonewton meter. And the variation is linear. So that means at point A when we have the magnitude minus 60, then the variation is linear. Now in the section AB, you can see at point A it is minus 60 and at point B it is minus 20. So at point B it will be minus 20. So now the variation in the segment AB is parabolic and its value is maximum at point O. So that means if I plot it, it will be like this and its maximum value is here corresponding to point O and it is 5.5 kilonewton meters. Now if I proceed further I see that at point in the segment BD its value at B is minus 20 and at D it is 0 and again you can see the variation here is linear. So this is a linear equation. So this is what we get in the bending moment diagram. But here we can see that the bending moment is changing its sign at two points that are this one and this one and let it call point PQ. The location of point P and Q can be located by putting M a b is equal to 0. So when we put m a b is equal to 0, we get two values x is equal to 5.38 and x is equal to 3.42. This point is at the distance 3.42 meters and the another one is at the distance 5.38 meters. So the other one is at the distance 5.38 meters. So the point P and Q are called point of contraflexure. So in a beam, if the bending moment changes sign at a point, the point itself having zero bending moment, the beam changes curvature at this point of zero bending moment and this point is called the point of contraflexure so this is the definition or this is the way we explain the point of contraflexure so now the point to remember is that the moment at these point is zero and it is changing its sign from negative to positive or positive to negative because you can see that at point C and D the this condition is satisfied but the second condition is not satisfied these two conditions that are satisfied are at point P and Q so the point P and Q are the point where the beam changes curvature so while plotting the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram we have to take care that we have to find out the position of all these points that is the point where shear force is 0 and the point where we have the bending moment is 0 and its maximum value and its position of maximum value and at all the points of loading. So these are various locations on the beam where we have to find out the magnitude as well as direction of shear forces and bending moment.